Hey guys, um, today we're going to talk about the concept of shoulder impingement and why it's probably a flawed idea and what it more likely is. Um, so shoulder impingement is the idea that there is something in your shoulder bumping up against something else and is creating um, an issue with one of the tissues. It's basically degenerating the tissues. Um, the most common type of shoulder impingement that's talked about is the type in which um, your supraspinatus tendon, one of your rotator cuff muscles, that runs right here, um, bumps up against this cor a, cor a ligament right here called the coracoacromial ligament. Um, the idea is that if you look at your shoulder from the side right here, so this is called a type one acromion process, and it's kind of this straight line. Your supraspinatus is coming out this way, so this is looking at the arm from the side. Um, you can move your shoulder blade up and down, you can move your arm up and down, and there's not a lot of like stuff that your supraspinatus can bump into right there, right? In a type two acromion process, there's a little bit of a curve right there, and when you lift your arm up, the idea is that you're going to bump that supraspinatus tendon up against that type 2 acromion process or against that coracoacromial ligament, and it's going to start creating damage over time, start fraying away that tendon. And then a type 3 acromion is almost like a hook straight down into that supraspinatus tendon, um, and the idea is that type 3s are more likely to experience this impingement syndrome. Um, the problem is that in reality, the research doesn't really support this as an idea. There is... Um, a slightly increased incidence, a small correlation between type 2 and type 3 acromion processes and shoulder pain, um, but it hasn't been proven to be a causal relationship yet. And the kind of cool thing about bones and all that um, is that when you stress a bone in a direction, the bone responds by trying to grow stronger into that direction. So it could even be something as simple as when you're overstressing your shoulder, the bone tur the bone starts to grow and it grows these little bone spurs. Looks more bone spurs looks more like a type 2 or type 3 acromion process. Um, and so the shoulder pain ends up, or like the, the use of the shoulder ends up making the bones look like this versus making the bones starting that way and actually creating damage in that supraspinatus. Um, there are other types of like impingement. There's internal impingement, which is the idea that your labrum, some connective tissue can get caught in the, um, in the shoulder joint right there and become irritated. Um, but the problem with impingement is that it really limits us to certain types of treatment. We think we have to remove this um, these tissues that are pressing on these other tissues, we have to uh, we, we have to change something mechanical to stop the pain, right? In reality, what's most likely happening is that the rotator cuff impingement is rotator cuff tendinopathy, just like any other kind of tendinopathy in your body. So whether it's Achilles tendinopathy, patellar tendinopathy, all that stuff, um, if you look at the tendons, the, the rotator cuff tendons of people that have these kind of impingement syndromes, they look just like the tendons of um, tendinopathy going el on elsewhere in the body. So the same kind of like chemicals that are in there, the same like, um, failure to heal basically, failure to adapt to the load going through it. So the way we fix most tendinopathies right now, probably the best evidence for most tendinopathy is just to load it appropriately. So tendons respond really well by to loading them, making them stronger, basically lifting weights with them, right? So with a tendinopathy, you want to stay at a fairly low level of pain, probably like a three to four, maybe five out of ten pains, a little bit achy, nothing really sharp, and you just want to be consistent when strengthening the musculature and the tendons, and a lot of the time the impingement syndrome will go away. Um, the other kind of stuff to talk about here is that um, there's a lot of subacromial debridements done. Basically, a surgeon goes in and he like cuts off bone spurs or he reef shapes the acromion process to look more like this type 1 here. Um, despite that, there's a lot of continued pain and progression of these tendinopathy kind of symptoms in people that get these surgeries. And so just changing the mechanics of what's going on doesn't necessarily fix it, which points more to it not necessarily being related to the type of acromion process. Um, and then the final one is that there's actually a really low correlation between um, degenerative changes seen in tendons in your rotator cuff tendons and pain. Um, people can have very large rotator cuff tears, have no pain or disability whatsoever. People can have a very small rotator cuff tear and just be crippled, not be able to lift their arm up and be in a very high amount of pain. Um, and that's because the, the changes to the tissue don't necessarily correlate with pain very well all the time, right? So we've talked about it a little bit before, we're not gonna get into it too much here, but kind of thinking of this stuff through the pain science lens of your brain has to decide there's a threat in the area for you to feel pain. If the changes happen slowly enough and you're not really doing anything with your shoulder where your brain decides this tendinopathy is, is a threat, it's not going to make you feel pain with it. Um, but basically, just to boil that all down, Impingement's not really a great model for why we end up having shoulder pain. Um, it's probably not a really useful diagnosis to get. It doesn't really tell you necessarily what kind of tissues are 
having issues, um, why you're having pain at all. And generally, it's going to be rotator cuff tendinopathy, and the best way to fix that is just to load it and lift things, um, probably with a good physical therapist or a personal trainer.